Let's hear what Brett Good, former Razorback, former Green Bay Packer, has to say about the matter. Brett, the college football playoff game might be postponed due to Ohio State having COVID issues within their football program. If it was up to you and the Buckeyes had the threshold of 53 members to play, everything played out within their position groups, even if they had some issues with numbers, would you have this game be played on Monday night? I absolutely. I mean, I understand, you know, the that they're not going to be at full strength and everything that happens, but there's been a lot of college teams across the board that have had that. And, you know, I agree with you all that, that they've had so many breaks and, and everything else, and, and who knows what's really going on, you know. And, and so I think that if they have that availability, I think you play the game because yeah. every team's had to, had to deal with that issue this year, and now it's, now it's your turn. Yeah, and what's the guarantee that a week later on the 18th everything would be fine and the numbers would be – you know where you need them to be for both teams a week a week later. Exactly. I mean, I think the only guarantee is that you're going to get your quarterback healthy, and that may be what they're trying to do. But you know, we don't know for sure what's going on, and and like you said, there's no there is no guarantee. Brett, we'll we'll get back to COVID issues within the NFL coming up, but I do want to get your take, your opinion on the news. Barry Odom, Jamil Walker, both coming back. We've asked our listeners this morning, hey, what was your reaction? What did you initially say when you saw the news? So I'll ask you the same thing. When you saw Barry Odom was coming back for this upcoming season, how excited were you? Uh, it, it very excited because you know we did so well and made such an improvement from you know last year to the year before and so now you want to see you know year two of what we can actually do and and, and keep growing through, as a program because you know it's hard for these guys when these coordinators change all the time and and, and you know you got guys with the transfer portal that want to leave and so now we've got some you know solid foundation built and now we can improve on that and I think that's great for for the guys that have come back to play football another year and also the guys coming in for the you know the recruiting class. Brett, what does it say about Sam Pittman and Hunter Yurchek that they were able to convince, whether it was money, whether it was relationship, what does it say about those two individuals that they were able to keep their strength and conditioning coach and their defensive coordinator after being potentially lured to another SEC and power or blue blood school? Well, I hope it was a little bit of both. I hope it was, you know, the personality and, and money because if, the more, the better we get as a program, the more our assistants are going to be tried to, to pull apart and taken away, and we're going to have to pay them more than, than what we're used to. And you look at all the, the conferences of the SEC to, you know, to Texas, you look at what they've paid their assistant coaches and, and how much money they're willing to just fork out. And so to be able to compete long-term if we get a good, you know, solid assistant, like a Sam Pittman was forever. He was just a long-term assistant coach. You're going to have to pay those type of guys. Yeah. So, you know, now you're in this period. It's kind of a, a dead period for the football program. Everybody's more or less off and off off campus until the 10th. How much is this about the body healing and, and coming through the season? I know the schedule's been different. You didn't have much of a downtime between the end of a regular season, normally right after Thanksgiving, then you, you have some bowl practices. You know, you played up in, until December and through uh, you know, the middle part of December. Um, how much of this is about just rest and getting the, the body healed up before you start what will be a, a pretty intense eight-week or so period of off-season uh, before before you start pre- spring practice? I think it's huge. And not only do you have to rest and get your body healed up from what you just put yourself through through the season, but you've got you know, the commitment for all the COVID stuff that we're still talking about of having to deal with that, whether, you know, that you've maybe pushed a birthday back for somebody that you've loved or Christmas or Thanksgiving. And so now's the time to get your body right and, and get right with your families and your friends and, and, and do it in a safe manner. But they've got to have that, you know, that normalcy back to their life a little bit before they start that off-season program again. And when we think about spring practice, I know off-season they got to make the physical gains and all of that, but really, you know, looking forward and, and ahead to March and spring practice, it's hard not to think about the quarterback position and think about that first. Uh, we know that, you know, a lot of eyes are going to be on that and, and the, maybe the battle that's going to ensue there. Absolutely, and I think that that's what we look forward to as Hawks fans is that, you know, we, we all used to joke there was, you know, fall football and spring football were, you know, two major sports in, in Arkansas because that's what we love. And, and so we're going to be tuned into that, but I don't know if they make the decision, you know, who, who's going to be the starter until probably summer. Um, but I definitely would like to see, you know, going into into training camp that they've named a starter if there's a, a clear-cut starter. So 
Um, it's going to be a tough battle. It's going to be fun to, t- fun to watch, and, and, and competition's good. Competition's great for a football team, and, and hopefully that will continue to help grow us. Brett Good with us, part of the Henderson Phillips Solutions employer team on the Morning Rush. Brett, when it comes to that quarterback conversation, I think that there's a couple, th- or not just a couple things, a lot of things are going to play into that. Kendall has had a relationship with Malik since he was a freshman in high school. KJ played one game this season, started, and the offense looked as good, if not the best, as it has all season. So I don't know. I think there's a lot of people that assume that KJ is just going to be the presumed starter, but you know how relationships work, man. How long or how much of a heated competition do you actually anticipate this being for the starting quarterback this fall? You know, relationships are huge, and, and understanding the offense and, and not turning the ball over, you know, being able to not only on interceptions but not fumbling and, and being able to hand the ball off correctly. Um, so you've got all those relationships, and then you got the relationships with the players and, and the teammates. And, and so I think it's going to – it, it kind of works itself out, and that just takes time sometimes, and sometimes it's quick. So I think there is an opportunity for, you know, for both of them to get some playing time this year. That, that's a real opportunity, but – I think when the the starter is going to be the one who looks like he's leading the competition, and with the turnover and interception and, and being a great teammate and a good locker room guy and a leader, but then you know mid season we could change, so we don't know uh, until we can can see him out there on, on the field. Brett, speaking of quarterbacks, one of the best quarterback coaches gurus out there is Urban Meyer. He's currently employed by Fox Sports. There's a lot of speculation there was surrounding him with the University of Texas. He pushed that aside. Now it's on to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Looking at his track record of no NFL experience, but the potential of having Trevor Lawrence waiting in the wings, do you think Urban Meyer would work in Jacksonville? I mean, I would come out of retirement for twelve million, wouldn't you? <laughs> That's I not... mean, it's it's a great opportunity yeah. for him. Maybe, maybe if twelve he wants and a half. Out of retirement. <laughs> maybe but, twelve and a half. But the problem is, the problem is Jacksonville. They've lost for a long time, and you know, I know, I know you've said it before. Is Urban? He hasn't gotten used to losing, and he likes control. In the NFL, you don't get a whole lot of control mm-hmm. of your players, yeah. and maybe that's why he's wanting twelve million dollars because he knows how hard it'll be. But, you know, it's not a long-term solution for the Jaguars. I, I, I just need a better place to live than Jacksonville. Yeah, Jacksonville yeah. kind of sucks. Yeah. I went there for the NCAA <laughs> They don't tournament. have any good golf courses and there. Here's the, <laughs> guys, here's the other thing. So, Brett, Jacksonville hasn't had a lot of success <laughs> over the course of its franchise history, but... In 2017, they were in the AFC Championship, a play away from being New England. And the reason they lost that game is because they didn't have a quarterback. Blake Bortles was their quarterback. Now, Calais Campbell, Jalen Ramsey, and a lot of their defensive specialists are gone and departed. But Trevor Lawrence, guys, is so appealing to me as an NFL GM, owner, coach, and what he could do for an entire football franchise. He is, and and he's very exciting. But, you know, now the what we saw in the in the playoff game already between you know him and Fields, that you know who who knows what's going to happen with that. Who knows point. what's going to happen in the combine uh, to come out? And and when I look at Jacksonville, yeah, a few years ago they were in the AFC Championship game, but agreed that the defense has been dismantled. They don't have a running back anymore. They don't have a wide receiver that you can really think of. I mean, I know they're you know their first round tight end, Mercedes Lewis, which was their long haul guy. He's in Green Bay. Backer. You know, so that they have really torn that team apart of any any leadership. And so you're you're in a full blown rebuilding you know team. Yeah, wild card weekend uh, in the NFL. Six games, three on Saturday, three on Sunday. Any of these games, all of them have a uh, a point spread of ten or less, and a lot of them are less than a touchdown this weekend. Uh, the uh, the Saints and the Bears are at ten right now, with uh, the Saints favored by a touchdown and a field goal. Any of these games more interesting to you of the six, three on Saturday, three on Sunday? Uh, you had to pick one or two out. Which ones stand out to you as a former player in the NFL? Well, I, I, first of all, I love watching all the, all the games because it's so, it's so exciting for playoff football because, like you said, you know the point spreads, everything's on the line. Um, I'd like to see what the Bills do um, to see if they're really you know going to be able to contend. And, and go out there because the culture, they're a good football team. And then obviously the Bears, you know, they, they got in from Arizona losing. Um, you know, so you don't know how good they'll be. But the Saints end up probably winning that game at home. Um, I think the Steelers come back and win that game because they, you know, it was a close game last week without Big Ben. Um, so it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting. Uh, you know, it, I, I think there probably might could be a blowout, you know, with the Buccaneers in Washington, depending on 
how well Tampa Tampa plays. So uh, it's it's going to be an exciting exciting weekend. Yeah. Brett, last uh, last question on the NFL before we let you go, buddy. The Browns, uh, I just I feel for that fan base, man. You get to your first playoff appearance since 2002. Oh, by the way, your coach has COVID, and now he can't coach against your heated rival, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Baker Mayfield, we know that he's overcome being a walk-on at both Texas Tech, Oklahoma, won the Burlesworth Trophy, won the Heisman Trophy. Any chance he can overcome this obstacle without his head coach in Heinz Field this weekend? If there was ever a chance to do it in Pittsburgh, it's this year with COVID protocols and the stadium capacity. That is their only chance, and that that's kind of the only gift that they have um, for their 2021 is, you know, you, you've got to make a name known in the playoffs. They had a great season, you know, they did a lot of fun stuff, but you really make your name and your legacy known in the playoffs. So if he wants to have a legacy in the NFL, he's going to have to figure out a way to win. All right. Brett's with us every Wednesday. We'll talk with him uh, throughout the NFL playoffs, get his thoughts on the previous week's games and uh, the upcoming games each weekend. So we'll talk about uh, this this past weekend's wild card games and the upcoming divisional games next Wednesday here on The Morning Rush. is brought to you by Henderson Phillips Employer Solutions. Brett's part of the team there. Hey, if uh, anyone listening this morning's in charge of Health insurance for your employees at work. You uh, need some help with staffing management solutions. You're looking for a new 401k, or maybe you just need new insurance on the building you're sitting in. Uh, you need personal insurance needs. Brett, you handle anything with insurance or employee benefits. That's right. We do employee benefits, anything on the insurance side. And, and I tell you what, I'm, I've been trying to push life insurance really hard because I have a friend that just died. He had four girls mm. and a wife, and they're going to lose their house. He had no will, and, you know, he didn't have life insurance. And so it's a it's a moment that you don't know, but it could be, you know, just a simple 50 bucks a month. So it, it's an easy fix, and, and we can take care of you. 479-651-2292. Now, that's your cell phone number, right? So, I mean, that's directly to you. Call or that, text. That's directly to me. As soon as I get off the radio here, you can call me. I'll be ready to answer. You can text right now, and see, you buzz, buzz him right here during the interview. 651 651- 2292 so call or text and brett will get back with you and uh would love to talk with you about anything insurance or employee benefit related 479-651-2292 for brett good with henderson phillips employer solution enjoy the games and we'll talk next wednesday all right thanks guys have a good one